my journey for American Idol was crazy because I was the only one they allowed to participate from another country. When I saw the judges, yeah. Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Luke Bryan like looking at you. Nutsa. It is Nutsa. Nutsa. Recording artist Nutsa. Here's Nutsa. Thank you. Forever and always. I grew up in Georgia, Tbilisi. I knew all of my life, I knew that I would be a singer. If we believed to my mom, I was like one years old when I sang a melody of a lullaby, I couldn't even <laughs> speak. I fly for 17 hours. So I was like exhausted and then the next day I had to sing. What did your aunt think? She was the one who were telling me that you are a Hollywood star. She, she was telling me this when I was six. Wow. After my audition, after like one month, she got cancer. First, I had to build myself in my country. I, I make everything for myself. Like, yes. I didn't have no one. I started from zero. Then yes. I went to Dubai, right? Yes. I was working in Dubai at the theater. But I, I figured out that the work is not for me. And that's when I started searching for a casting director for American Idol. I found her. You didn't just sit there and wait for the dream to come to you. You pursued it. There were a lot of people when I was saying, I'm going to go to Hollywood, they were just laughing. <laughs> that gave me so much motivation. When people are telling me, it makes me a beast. I was dreaming about American Idol. Okay, I did it. Now you got to think about something that is greater than that. You have to always work. You have yeah. to always progress. Once you stop, then it's like... Hey guys, welcome to this episode on the Passionate Few Podcast. It's your host, Omar, and today we have a very special interview as we sit down with none other than American Idol finalist, Nutsa. Nutsa, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for inviting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My pleasure to be here. So a lot of people, it's our pleasure to have you here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really excited to have you here because our mutual friend, Darren Prince, who's also your manager, connected yeah. us. And also, I know that you just got back because earlier this week you sang at the Dodger Stadium, the right. national anthem. Yes coming off American Idol, all these amazing things are starting to happen and grow for you. But take us back, before you had this dream of being a singer, before you had Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, the praise of millions of people around the world, mm -hmm. where did you grow up and where did this dream of Nutsa being a singer, where did it all start for you as, as a young girl? Well, I since I remember myself, I started uh, singing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, if, if we believe to my mom, I was like one years old when I sang a melody of a lullaby. I couldn't even <laughs> speak. Uh -huh. Yes. So after that, it, it was just so natural coming. I, I was always doing concerts at, at my home and mm -hmm. like, that. so I knew all of my life, I knew that I would be a singer. Mm -hmm. And I always believed that I would be very successful singer. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it was just um, a feeling for me that and still is now that like mm -hmm. a feeling uh, that like something is meant to you. Mm -hmm. So it's like th this feeling is just helps me so much because it's something that mm, makes me believe in myself and my talent. And um, I just been wanted to do this all of my life. Wow. And the thing is that when you don't have any other thing to do and you're only focused mm -hmm. on what, what's your purpose and what's your talent and what you want to do in life, I think that that's what helps the most. And where did you grow up? I grew up in Georgia, Tbilisi. Which is the Republic of Georgia, right? Not the state of Georgia for yeah, Americans Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not the state. It's the <laughs> country, <laughs> Georgia. And it's a very small and beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And the capital is Tbilisi. So I'm from Tbilisi. I was born and raised there. But when I was a kid, I was also raised in Turkey, Istanbul as well. Mm. So I was like flying uh, to Turkey to my aunt for my holidays mm -hmm. and flying back to Georgia uh, for school. So wow. it kind it helped me and my uh, attitude as well, I think, to be more open and to love freedom and to mm -hmm. be like, um, I don't know, it's, it's just helped me a lot, yeah. actually. And take me back to when you started singing, were you always very good? Were you a natural uh, as a young girl mm -hmm. or were you not that good and then got better over time? Did you have an environment of your family supporting you like yeah. take us back to the very beginning of that dream mm, so the my best or did supportive. you think you were good but maybe you really weren't <laughs> <laughs> well i had that kind of moments as well now when so. i listen to my singing i'm like why? <laughs> why why did i sing this like that yeah. of course 
but every year mm -hmm. I progress and every year I I try to get better mm -hmm. and now when I listen to my old singing and my old performances there is a lot of things that I don't like nice. and I always do that even like at the Dodgers performance right I watch that performance I listen and I always try to catch my mistakes and then I try to get better and that's I think the most important thing when mm -hmm. you want to get successful and want to get better mm -hmm. so of course like if I listen now my performances when I was for example 16 years old I don't like it mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, my biggest supporter of, of uh, in my family was my aunt mm. so she was the one who were telling me that you are a Hollywood star Wow so but she, she, she was would... telling me this when I was six so she would breed that to manifested into yes you. Wow. definitely she was telling me this when i was six because i was like everything uh, mm -hmm. and, uh when i had concert i was a presenter mm -hmm. i was uh, an actress i was a dancer and i was a singer wow <laughs> like, Triple i was talent. given the show yes. so my aunt was like you are a hollywood star since i remember mm -hmm. uh, myself she was telling me this all the time wow and it actually like Oh, maybe I'm not a star yet, but I like I made it to to American Idol, so yes. and they actually give you the ticket to Hollywood. That's crazy. <laughs> that was the most amazing thing. Yeah, and I know it's funny. We were watching a video you posted on your social media recently. Yeah, talking about how you used to write down as a little girl, like I see myself yes. on American Idol. Yes, and to think that Ryan Seacrest ushered you into a room and the judges were there. Yes. What was that moment like? to have a dream that was a dream for years in your mind now become a reality in real life. What did that feel like for you? Oh yeah, that was like, I was, I swear, I, I <laughs> was in shock. It was a total shock for me. Yes. I, I knew when you believe in yourself, like you know that that moment's gonna come. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, that moment's gonna come. But mm -hmm. when it actually comes, you're like, who it's like you have i had tears of joy mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that because like i was crying all this period on mm -hmm. american idol i was crying a lot because it was tears of joy and it was tears of excitement so it's like it's very emotional especially for a person like me because i'm very emotional mm -hmm. it was a very very big deal but after that mm -hmm. you have another goals Yes. other goals and yes. other dreams once you make that once you do that check yeah. then it's time to uh strive yeah. for the, mm, the highest yeah goals. what's what's next and in, in the next level yeah uh -huh. and take me back to maybe that day were you nervous were you in anxiety did you sleep the night before did you feel relaxed and calm like walk us through because a lot of people watching this that might be their dream to a young man or young woman who uh -huh. has a dream of being on the show Take us to what it was like the night before going into that audition for American Idol. That was my journey for American Idol was crazy because mm -hmm. I was the the only one who they allowed to participate from another country, like totally another. Really? I was actually yes, I was wow. actually in Dubai when I did my first audition. Uh -huh. I was in Dubai at home and I did like maybe five Zoom calls before the producers asked me to fly into Vegas. Wow. So I fly to Vegas. Uh -huh. I was I was. I fly for 17 hours because uh -huh. like it was like 15 hours to LA and then like two hours from LA to Vegas or it's one mm -hmm. hour I don't remember so I was like exhausted and then the next day I had to sing wow yes yeah. so it, but but it, <laughs> I didn't care I didn't care I was so mm -hmm. excited even like if I didn't sleep at all I knew I would sing very good because mm -hmm. I was that excited and you were just ready yeah. I was ready for that moment. Mm -hmm. I was ready for that moment. What did, what did your aunt think, the one who supported you all those years when she, she saw you on American Idol? That must have been <laughs> no, surreal for her. She, it was the most magical time for her. It was like, it, or for my family, and she was like, I was telling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was telling you guys. But after that moment, you know what happened to her? There was um, a very sad story. Like it was a very happy story in our mm -hmm. family. And the other thing was that she got cancer mm -hmm. after I um, um, like uh, my audition. After like one month, she got cancer, and like we were like, why now? You know, because yeah. we had like very happy moment and then very sad. But I think that um, if you uh, if you have love in your heart and mm -hmm. kindness, like you're gonna. Um, get past that. Get yeah. past that. And thank God we we. Uh, Got past, you got past that. that. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Now, in terms of you actually, um, you know, having obstacles with singing, were there times where you doubted the dream at all? Because a lot of people, you know, when they're 12, 14, 15, 16, 20, 21, you know, as you grow up, you see everyone else around you, 
and a lot of people start to play the comparison game, especially with social media. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where you doubted the, the fact that you'd ever get your chance at American Idol or to sing for the world or anything like that? Or mm -hmm. did you hold a positive attitude the whole time? Like, what were some of the challenges, I guess, for you mentally? Yeah. Um, making, you know, getting to this side of your dream. Yeah. Oh, well, it was so many challenges yeah. because I'm going to repeat, coming from a small country, mm -hmm. it's even more harder when you are born in in U.S. Like mm -hmm. you want from there to get first get here and then yes. from here start. First, I had to build myself in my country. Mm -hmm. First, I had to uh, first I, I make everything for myself. Like yes. I didn't have no one. I started from zero, mm. and I I bought my own house. I, uh, I I I was the only one paying for for my everything. Wow! So like first, I built myself so uh, so high, and uh, like I'm in the position in, in right. my country from where I could mm -hmm. travel the world, from where I could like uh, go and pursue my dreams. So yes. first I did that, and that road was very hard because there were, uh, there were a lot of people when I was saying, I'm gonna go to Hollywood, they were just laughing. <laughs> yeah. They were just laughing, he was, he was like, oh, oh yeah, of course you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not like this. And that gave you but, motivation. Uh, but that's, that's what I mean, I, that gave me so much motivation. When mm -hmm. people are doubting me, mm -hmm. it makes me a beast. Mm -hmm. I may not. I may not seem that kind of a person because I'm mm -hmm. kind. I, I believe I'm kind and I I'm positive person. Mm -hmm. But that kind of people, like mm -hmm. I I'm not gonna wish for them anything. Mm -hmm. But they're gonna see. Yeah, watch and see. Yeah, watch yeah, and yeah. see. Enjoy and the e show. even yeah. after of uh, of uh, from American Idol, I had even more haters. Because mm. once you get successful, uh, then you get more haters. But I'm yes. happy for it. Yes. I'm happy for it. I wish only the best for them. Wow. Because when haters see you win, when haters see you successful, they actually like pit themselves from yes. the inside. Correct? Yes. yes. So it's just, um, I had many people like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, when, you, uh, when you have God with you, actually, mm -hmm. they cannot do anything for you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of you building yourself in your country, did you ever have any sort of odd jobs or what were things you were doing to support yourself while you were building your dream? Well, I was actually every TV show that we have, every contest that we have, mm -hmm. I've entered it. I've entered everything. <laughs> And not only in my country. Then I, when I was done with my country, yeah. when I was like 20 or 19 years old, I was done. Like yeah. I was like, what Conquer else to do? Yeah. Like yeah. Then I went to Turkey. Mm -hmm. and then I also I went to another country as well. I went to Latvia. I won one contest there. I went to Albania. I went to Russia as well. And then I was like, you know, this. Is, and then I was not feeling that any of that was my place mm. so I always felt that okay now it's time for then US. I went to Dubai right yes. I was working in Dubai at the theater mm -hmm. I was working there for one year but I I figured out that the work mm -hmm. is not for me mm. like I cannot go and like work somewhere when you do like every time the same thing mm -hmm. like it was just not for me yeah you're the, the artist in you craves new adventure yeah yeah I was like I was um, not depressed but I was like sometimes I was feeling this uh, I can mm. do more mm -hmm. you know so then what that was uh, actually the time when I started thinking okay now I gotta figure it out what to do and uh, where to move and mm -hmm. uh, you know what to do and that's when I started um, searching for um, a casting director for American Idol I mm -hmm. found her I sent my videos my like CV mm -hmm. and then she was very interested so that's how it happened. Wow! So you, on your own, sought out the casting yeah, director, yeah, reached yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. On my own. So yes. can you tell a little bit of that story? Just because this shows for people listening or watching that you didn't just sit there and wait for the dream to come to you. You pursued it. You Everything went, I you did. It's just every like that. Nothing came by its. Yes. <laughs> I think after American Idol, a Darren came <laughs> by himself. But me, I was the only one who were like always. Uh, sending everything and always mm. trying to get what I want. Mm. But for American Idol, I was sending my videos on the website for like eight years mm -hmm. and, and no one really reached out to me. So then right. I was like, okay, now I got to change something because clearly right. it's not working. Change your approach, yes. <laughs> so I was like, I was Googling so hard. Yeah. Um, and then I found out 
I just uh, I found out the casting director and, and, and I sent her everything and my best friend who also lives in, in Dubai bought that now she's from Kazakhstan uh -huh. she's my biggest supporter as well mm -hmm. and uh, she was like it's like you gotta try America's Got Talent mm -hmm. and one thing about me is that I never say until I do. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm going on American Idol, but I didn't tell her because mm -hmm. I want first to do audition. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it. But I know that I'm already going to America's, yeah, yeah. Uh, American, American Idol. Idol. Yeah. So she was like, you got to try America's Got Talent. I'm going to Google for you. And like, mm -hmm. she was like so motivated. Then she was like going crazy. <laughs> when she found out that news, it yeah. was going crazy. Yeah, I never wow. say even to my mom. Mm -hmm. When I auditioned and I got the ticket, that's when everyone uh, found out. Found out. Wow. Yes. <laughs> now, in terms of singing, what do you think is it that makes a great singer? Like in your experience, because I'm sure from you have your experience, uh -huh. but you also have the experience of being around other people. Yeah. What is it that really allows certain singers and musicians to rise to the top compared to others who might get stuck? Like, what is it that that X factor? Personality. As you see it? Mm. personality 100% personality mm. because um, there are a lot of talented people mm -hmm. but that habits um, and your your energy and your aura and your I don't know your personality who you are mm -hmm. I think um, that combined with the talent is gonna get you a big success mm -hmm. definitely yeah, and because it's funny, because I know that they were saying, and many people have said this, that you're one of, if not the hardest working contestant, just in terms of not just the singing and the work and the craft, but also just getting into the room took so much of an obstacle. Uh -huh. For you, was that something that you like bred yourself with, with personal development and books and positive thinking? How did mm -hmm. you cultivate that muscle? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people back home, your friends who also had dreams, that may still be back in Georgia or be back there and didn't pursue it. Mm -hmm. What was it that you did differently that you think kind of kept you motivated and inspired? Um, I think I was uh, praying for sure because I was praying mm -hmm. uh, since I was like 12 years old, 11 years old. That's like, when. Please God, get me on American. Idol. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just uh, believing uh, like uh, in myself and something like greater than 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 mm -hmm. me and like this power and it really, really, really. Uh, gives you uh, like a different kind of energy. It's mm. like I always feel like that I have like a white light mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just protects me always. Mm. It's just crazy, but it's uh, something I have in, in my and it, it, it's also the energy. Mm -hmm. The energy, it, it gives you like different kind of energy. Mm. So I think that uh, also when I was thinking, well, my friends, for example, the same, uh, same like. Um, how to say uh, generation, generation same, same yeah. generation they they couldn't do it right why mm -hmm. when I was thinking about that I was thinking about that so I was thinking that they had backup like uh, mm -hmm. as their they had like father who gonna take care of that uh, someone mm -hmm. who's gonna take care of this mm -hmm. but me I had to take care of everything you had no plan B no. Yeah. So that means that when you have that, when you don't have a plan B, it means that you have to do it. Mm -hmm. There is no other chance. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the mentality I had. Like you I have, have to, to do it. it. Yeah. yeah. But if I can't make it now mm -hmm. and somebody says no, I will try again and mm -hmm. again and again and again. Until. Until it's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. And I love that you talk about, I heard an interview recently, you talked about personal development and your love for stuff like that, that mm -hmm. your favorite book when you were younger was a book called Eat the Frog. Right, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that taught you in terms of mindset? Because it's yeah. a very interesting book. I've read it too. I love it. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah. Um, so the most important thing I got from that book was that, well, I was always, even now, I'm always writing down what I have to do for today. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I was like, okay, I did this, I did this, I did that. And then at the end, there's, there's written something and then I just cancel, like, I don't do it. Mm -hmm. So what this book taught me is that, like, you have to do first the most important task. Mm -hmm. So if the frog is like, the frog is the, the most difficult thing mm -hmm. that you have to do. So, f so it taught me that first thing you have to do the most important thing. Mm -hmm. In, in a day from and then you can do the rest mm -hmm. so that's what it what it taught me so I was like 
whatever is is uh, the most uncomfortable for mm -hmm. me whatever is that you know really holds me back whatever is that gives me this uncomfortable feeling mm -hmm. i'm willing to do that it's mm -hmm. very hard it's not yeah. easy for example like i want to i gotta make the call and like i feel very uncomfortable with that call mm -hmm. i'm like i'm like postponing i'm like right. oh, oh maybe i do this after one week tomorrow, and then two weeks and then tomorrow yeah, tomorrow yeah, yeah. But that book taught me that, no, you got to do it now, yes. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Hey guys, we'll get right back to this video in a sec. But first, I have a quick question for you. Given that the e-commerce industry is growing by the trillions year over year, have you ever dreamed of running your own e-commerce business like many of the guests we've interviewed on the show? But maybe you felt overwhelmed about where to begin? Lucky for you, today's sponsor, Zendrop, solves this exact problem. You see, with Zendrop, you simply select high quality products, add them to your store, and they handle shipping and fulfillment while you make the profit. No more guessing games on product sourcing or dealing with inventory hassles. Zendrop's platform is designed with you in mind, making it incredibly simple to launch and scale your drop shipping business in a one-stop shop. Plus, they're offering an exclusive deal. Sign up today through our link below and their team will personally craft your very own store to kickstart your e-commerce journey. They even have weekly coaching calls to answer all of your questions and help you get up and running in no time. It's truly more than just a platform. It's your e-commerce partner waiting to join you on the path to success. So why wait? It only takes five minutes or less to sign up. Simply hit pause, head over to zendrop.com forward slash passion, and let's turn your passion for e-commerce into a thriving online business today. Thank you to Zendrop for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. And then in terms of you coming to American Idol, you know, performing, having millions of people see your stuff, how has your life changed the most since American Idol? And how do you feel you've changed the most or grown the most since being featured on the show? Yeah. That show um, is um, a very unique show. Mm -hmm. Why? For, for an artist, because they are giving you a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. a lot of challenges. Um, mentally, physically as well, and you're like physically because of me, because I was flying in and out, in and out, like for 15, 17 hours all, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, uh, I was, my body was tired, but mm -hmm. my mind was like, I was pushing. Mm -hmm. So. That was the first challenge. Then you get to you got to go and sing on live television. First, it was like when I saw the judges, yeah. Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Luke Bryan, like looking at you, yeah. like this, and just um, waiting for you to sing. Yeah. That was like, I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> somebody pinched me. <laughs> I thought that I was dying. <laughs> what, what, what did it feel like for you in that moment? It was nerves, oh, yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah, relax. no, no, nerves, nerves. I was like, that was the first time I didn't enjoy my singing. Mm. I was like, please God, let me finish the song, <laughs> like, because I was freaking out. Yes, I was freaking out. Like, imagine watching them all of your life, and you feel like that they are unreachable. Yeah. So finally, you, you reach them. Mm -hmm. So imagine like standing right there and singing, but a cappella, mm -hmm. you know, no not music. even music. No, yeah, a cappella. Wow. So they are hearing every note. So I was like, <laughs> I was like yes. really not enjoying that moment. Did, did at you all. go through a lot of different song choices before you decided which one you wanted to perform? I love American Idol for that because mm -hmm. they, they were giving us freedom. They have the most amazing vocal uh, teachers, mm -hmm. uh, really, and a very good production, very good producers. But they were like, okay, write, write for us the, your top songs, what you want to sing. So mm -hmm. I was writing it, it for them, and then they were hearing these songs. Mm -hmm. So they were actually um, suggesting, like, okay, like, I think this one is really good for you. I think in, in this one, you really showcase your talent. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to them as well, and also I was giving them my adv um, suggestions for the mm -hmm. song. So that's how, how it went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in terms of your, like, vocal ranges and stuff like that, is that something that you kind of, like, always were a natural at? Did you struggle with that? Mm -hmm. Like, where, like, how was your skill set developed with your, your vocal ranges? Well, I didn't like my voice when I was, like, 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, I liked a little bit, but, like, I didn't like my high re uh, register because I mm -hmm. felt that I, I was singing a bit in, in my nose. Mm -hmm. So I really worked on that. So mm -hmm. uh, now my voice got uh, more deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked on that, and I work, uh, like, 
almost every day I do vocal rest two days only mm -hmm. and I'm choosing specific programs if I if I don't have at this moment a vocal uh, coach mm -hmm. I go I find the programs mm -hmm. online and I take that course for the voice mm -hmm. and I always try to find new course and finish that Mm. Uh, course for the voice. Yes, makes sense. Uh -huh. Did you get any good advice from uh, Lionel Rich here, Katy Perry, or any of them in terms of how to get better at your craft or any, any notes or side notes from them that they taught you or anything? Uh, they taught me to just be myself mm -hmm. and never play to be somebody else. Mm. They taught me to be more original. Mm -hmm. They taught me to be always who I am, and that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, when I came to audition, I was just showcasing everything. So I wanted to uh, dance for them. I wanted to, <laughs> you know, like do everything. And they were like, just relax and just be yourself. And mm -hmm. that's it. So, so I became, especially in US, I became more of who I am mm. inside. And, and I'm proud of it. And I am becoming more of who I am every day. Day. I love that. In, yeah. a, in uh, Los Angeles, particularly. And, and in terms of what your next vision is and venues you'd like to perform or, you know, next dreams post American Idol, mm -hmm. what are the things now that as your dreams sort of opened up, as you have all these doors opening up, what are mm -hmm. the next visions for you on the horizon of what you'd like to perform and do? Well, I. I, I say uh, goals, um, like uh, the, the goals that are the most. Um, near maybe for mm -hmm. now is just we want to do an album now mm -hmm. uh, we want to have a, a, at least three hit song and then from there um, the rest of the doors the will rest open. of the yes 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 yeah. but the, but the dreams that I have I, I don't really like to say much mm -hmm. I, I like to do it first and then talk about how you did it after. Yeah, yeah that's the best thing. <laughs> how about in terms of musical influences for you growing up and now? Who were some of the artists that inspired you and that you maybe either molded your voice after or wanted to be like them? Who are the early influences for you growing up? And mm -hmm. then who are the people you look at now for inspiration with your music? Um, I really took a lot of inspiration from Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. Tina Turner, and Beyonce. Mm. These are my top three artists that I love. I love Prince mm -hmm. as well. Also, I love if we take another genre. Uh, mm -hmm. I like. I can listen to every genre actually. Mm -hmm. I like and also, take bits and pieces. Yes, from them. I yeah. love Arabic music as well. Mm -hmm. Like it, sometimes it it can make me uh, like, like Amr, Amr influenced. Diab? Amr Diab. I'm listening yeah. to Amr Diab. Yes. I'm listening. I can listen. Like on the way when we were coming here, I was listening to Brazilian music. Mm -hmm. I can listen to rock. I love mm -hmm. Guns N' Roses. Like whatever is that, like that like good music and mm -hmm. like tasty music. Mm -hmm. I I'm listening and I'm just going into their world. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that is that what you love about it? I mean, what is it about singing for you that that makes you feel so connected to it is it the freedom like what is it about singing that you love so much yeah freedom and whenever i'm singing i feel like that i'm going into another world it just makes me so happy if the mm -hmm. day uh is finished without me singing that i i feel like that i'm not okay yeah <laughs> like yes. i gotta sing that's why i'm happy people always ask me oh nuta why you are so positive all the time because <laughs> i'm singing you yes. know, and that makes me happy. Yes. That's it. Yeah, yeah simple that, as that. Yeah. That's, that I feel like that um, people like that are really blessed. And that's why I pray. And I, when I pray, I always thank God that I am able to do what I love. Because mm -hmm. when you do what you love, it's like you're happy, mm -hmm. you know, and you do it every day. And uh, it just keeps you positive all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a blessing, I think. What about in terms of some of the most challenging things about being a singer that a lot of people don't know, right? Because I'm sure there's a lot more work that goes into it than most people realize, right? Mm -hmm. People can be like, oh, you're singing, that's easy. They don't know the hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of hours you put into it. Yeah. But what are, what are some of the maybe things that people don't realize about how hard it is to cultivate the craft and, and develop but it's your very, skill? It's very hard. Like, you got to first you become a brand. Mm -hmm. So you got to work on that brand. Mm -hmm. You have to always uh, do better and better and better. First, okay, I was dreaming about American Idol. Okay, mm -hmm. I did it. Now you got to think 
about something that is greater than that you gotta mm -hmm. like it's like it's never stopping you have to always work you have yeah. to always progress once you stop then it's like you got you have to climb that uh Momentum stairs again, again. Yeah, yeah. and then again and again and it's like always sometimes i'm also doubting myself mm -hmm. i'm making a lot of mistakes i'm making mm -hmm. sometimes really stupid moves mm -hmm. but then the the thing is that you have to realize uh, what was mistake what worked for you mm -hmm. and i think that's the most important thing but i think for for artists the most important thing is your music i really really want to uh put out my album and my songs and mm -hmm. my own music yeah no i think that would be incredibly powerful mm -hmm. too for the world to see it mm -hmm. in terms of writing your own music do you write as well or yes is, so you do yeah, write yeah, yeah, and yeah. sing yeah yeah the the last song that that uh i recorded alive is mm -hmm. the song that i wrote when i was 19 years old and then we produced the song in dubai wow yes there is um, a crazy. very very talented producer in dubai stoyan mm -hmm. he's my very good friend and we were just work i i showed him my the melody that mm -hmm. i that i wrote and then he was like oh we gotta do from this amazing song yes. and yeah and we did it wow yeah and then in terms of you um like nowadays when you see yourself and the landscape of music changing mm -hmm. you know back in the day a lot of it was you having skill and then having you know management and teams around you but i know nowadays a big part of it is growing the personal brand or building the personal brand mm -hmm. right um, in a day and age prior where, you know, a lot of the artists or influences that you had, they had teams that did all that. Mm -hmm. I'm curious for you as an artist, do you feel that pressure to do all that? Or is that secondary to just doing what you love and that stuff kind of comes? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, d does it affect the art in any way for you? The pressure of having to grow the brand as well as the skill? It's definitely a pressure. It's mm -hmm. definitely a pressure, but it's um it's not something that really bothers me. Mm -hmm. I think it's 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 a process and it's something that you you got to do and I think that's good for the brand. I I would lo mm -hmm. love to have that kind of uh, deals with different brands and mm -hmm. to have my own uh, clothing line and we are working on that. Nice. And yeah, yes. fragrance and everything. I think it's good good for the brand and it's good for the 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 art as well. Why not? Yeah, very yeah. and more people reach your message of yeah. course hey guys quick question have you been enjoying this video but you're thinking to yourself man i love this content but i want to learn how to grow my brand or my business well if your answer is yes you're not alone in fact millions of entrepreneurs deal with this exact same issue and it's something that i've learned the answer to from interviewing seven eight and nine figure entrepreneurs around the world and this philosophy that solves all that is a concept called who, not how. Now the who, not how philosophy states that anytime you're stuck on the hows to get to the next level in your life, your brand, or your business, that there's always a who to help you get there. And it's for this exact reason that I'm super excited to announce that I've officially launched our brand new Passionate Few community to help you do exactly that. And yes, it's 100% free. Join me and the thousands of other entrepreneurs that can help you make your life, your business, and your dreams a reality. With no further ado, let's get back to the video. What about in terms of your advice to people out there, maybe the young Nutsa, uh, who's, you know, dreaming, maybe they're from a different country, or maybe they're in the US or whatever it is, who has a dream and they're trying to protect it, but maybe they don't have an environment that supports them, or maybe they doubt themselves. Mm -hmm. What would your best advice be as the one girl as since you were once that young girl who had a dream and now is making it happen mm -hmm. with the wisdom you have now what would you tell those young dreamers who who maybe have their own dreams and they're looking for you for advice that you know it's it's easy to lose faith actually mm -hmm. it's it's easy it's easy to not to be motivated some days mm -hmm. but the most important thing is honestly I know everyone says that, but every time you feel like giving up, like you have to find something, something, you have to think of the, the future, you have to think of the bigger picture, it doesn't matter what kind of situation you're in, and you gotta fight for it. Mm -hmm. And and the, the most important thing what, when I always say is that you gotta keep God first. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing, that's, that's the only energy, that's the only power that's gonna keep you Mm -hmm. going and that's gonna keep you motivated it's gonna give you more power it doesn't matter in which situation you are because I've been through in every situation actually <laughs> yes. yeah and I didn't stop mm -hmm. so if you don't stop actually and you're gonna keep going you're gonna get there sooner or later mm -hmm. honestly like if you will not give up on that that 
moment where you're feeling that at your lowest, mm -hmm. you're gonna really rise after that. Wow. And, and in terms of your mom, um, does she look at this and your family, do they look at this and go, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, what's that feel like for you to be able to, you know, make them proud and make them feel good about mm -hmm. all you, everything you're doing? Well, my mom is always telling me, I don't believe that you are my, uh, <laughs> my daughter because, cause, because she's very different than, mm -hmm. than I. Not like, a singer. She's not a singer. No, she's not a singer. She's, she's the kindest human being on uh -huh. this earth. Like uh -huh. she has amazing heart. Yes. And I always say to her, because of you, I think that I have this talent because, mm. you know, God always uh, gifts something um, like this, like a talent to a good people, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. a kind people. So I always say thank you to my mom mm. for being like that and for, you know, uh, she really gift me her life because mm -hmm. after she divorced with my father, when um, when I was one years old, she never had a husband or not boyfriend no or no one. Wow. Yes. So she was your best buddy. My best to you. buddy. We were always sleeping together, going everywhere together to every wow. audition, to every. Yes. Yeah, so she's a hero mom for me. Wow. Yeah. So, like, I wanted to make everything for her, to make her proud always. And yeah, that, that was also really motivating for me. I love that. So, mm -hmm. so you had a single mother, mm -hmm. and it was you and her, and you guys were like best friends. And so she took you to auditions and would go through the whole process yeah. with you and see you on good days and bad days and everything yes. like that. Yes, yes. Wow. She was the one. And now, as I can, I'm like, I'm doing everything for her. So mm -hmm. she's now she's telling me, oh, I'm the happiest mother ever. <laughs> and like, I think that's very, very beautiful thing. Yeah. Does she mm -hmm. watch your videos on YouTube and send you links and stuff to all My the mom? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. She is like always <laughs> on, on the social media, like posting everything yes. and uh, always sends me some things and always calls me. She's, you know, this mother's that like, for example, if she's going to know mm -hmm. that here is a very hot weather, she's going to call me and say, don't go outside. You're going to burn. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, yeah. so it's, she's like this all the time. But I just take it as fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, as yeah, a joke. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, you're joking. I, I can go outside. Has she been <laughs> to the U.S. yet? No, no, not yet, yes. not yet. But uh, but uh, as I'm gonna start leaving here, I think in two three months, I'm going to take her with me definitely. That'll be awesome mm -hmm. to see her, see you sing for stadiums here. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But she's like, uh, you know, I think now um, my mother's friends are more excited. My mm -hmm. mother is like kind of used to it. Used to <laughs> this because she's like she's not nervous anymore. Mm. When I tell her mom I gotta go and sing here like this, I gotta go and sing at the stadium. She's like, I know you're gonna do good. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Like, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one. So she's like, that's I think the beautiful thing as well that my yeah. mom believes in me so much. Yeah. My family is like, oh, we know, we know, yeah. you're gonna do good. Well, because they saw you all <laughs> along. That's an incredible journey. Yeah. Now, how about? I know it's a touchy subject, but um, how about your father? Has he heard of your success, or is there not much of a relationship there? Or? Well, I have an uh, amazing relationship with my father, mm -hmm. but it's just not that we are so connected sure. now. I'm not calling him as much as I'm speaking sure. with my mom. And that's kind of sad. I would love to have a, a perfect relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. And I know I got to make it work. Mm -hmm. Like once I go to Georgia, I really want to become more close to my father. Mm -hmm. But we were like... The, the thing is that I don't have that much connection to him. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like every day I'm not speaking with him. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm seeing him and we are speaking, it's, it's just amazing connection. connection. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's just love. And I'm very thankful to, uh, to him as well yes. because it's his genes as yes. well. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, he's halfway responsible hey, too. Yes. yes. So I'm, I'm really happy because I look like my father. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Mom, father, I'm like, thanks for... Yeah. everything <laughs> Thank, yeah thanks for half the, the battle the eyes and for the lips <laughs> for everything that's incredible yeah. now in terms of going back have you become kind of like a local hero in georgia do a lot of people look up to you there and yeah, you know they see definitely. what you've done what does that feel like for you to be such an inspiration to to people um that's very beautiful that's very beautiful uh, it's um and, and, but i thought that i think that i was not ready for that mm. i was not ready for that because now everyone everyone in georgia wants to hear 
what uh, how I did it and now what kind of advice I can give to a uh, young generation mm -hmm. and uh, me I'm, I'm like very this positive person I, yeah. I, I don't really like to go into deep uh, mm -hmm. conversations yes uh, and they're like people were always now when I went back and I did interviews they were waiting for something amazing yeah, yeah. from Some, me like, to hear. deep philosophical so, thing. Yeah, they yeah. Have, like, uh, just never give up. <laughs> yeah, and have good, good positive energy. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, but uh, I think that in, in, I think once I grow older and older, that wisdom is going to come definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, uh, on that spirit, I do want to ask, what advice do you have for people who have a dream to pursue it? to find their passion mm -hmm. or make it a reality. You were fortunate enough to find that passion or that dream very young. Um, but there's a lot of people who maybe haven't figured it out. So uh, not to get too deep, yeah. uh, but what advice do you have for people to find their passion and really have the courage to pursue it? Mm -hmm. I think to find that passion is that, for me, the most important thing is to only listen to yourself. Like mm -hmm. there, there is something inside of you, like a small voice or something that it, it always tells you what's right and what's mm -hmm. wrong. I never went with something that I felt, oh, like, uh, okay, the, it's going to be amazing. Like you're going to get this, you're going to get that. But if something inside of me tells me that, you know, it's something, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. You know, I never do that. Mm -hmm. It means that I always follow my instincts. I always follow that little voice that I have inside of me. If mm -hmm. that's going to make me happy, if that's going to make me uh, better, if that's something that it's kind to other people and I don't mm -hmm. harm other people, I'm going to get there. But um, I think the most important thing also for people to know is that it doesn't matter whatever you're going to do, just make sure you don't harm another person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you're going to do. And when you're going to do kind to other people as well, uh, you're going to get a lot of uh, good things coming to your life. I love that. Nutsa, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. That was incredible. Uh -huh. And then before we wrap up, we had a couple people we told you were coming. Uh -huh. And um, they wanted to know if you'd be up. To, if not, it's okay. If you'd be up to sing even like 30 seconds of maybe something uh, that you'd like to share. Uh -huh. Is that... Uh -huh. I can sing. I can sing my song. Okay. So it's called Alive. Okay. I love standing up high. I love. No, I can't deny. It feels like I'm somebody I've always wanted to be. Alive like never before. Alive won't hide anymore. It feels like. <laughs> that was incredible. I got chills on Really? It. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's, is that something that you were just like, it's just like, it, you were called to do? Do you feel compelled to do it? Yeah. Just from yes. the very beginning? Yes. That's something that I was called to do. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something that is very natural. It's very organic. And I feel like uh, there is something in singing as well and with singers that you cannot learn. Mm. It's something that somebody cannot teach you. You can't fake it or add no, it. No, yeah, no, it's no, no. It's something coming from the soul. Yes. When I sing some kind of songs, when I, what I mean that I'm kind of going into another world is that it's something that is really natural. Yes. Yeah, you cannot teach that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, Nutsa, thank you so much for thank being on you. the show. Guys, make sure to follow Nutsa in the description down below and stay tuned for her new album, her new performances because this is one of, if not the hardest working singer coming out right now. Thank Until next you. time, live strong, live with passion, and go pursue those dreams. Thank Definitely. you again. Definitely. Thank, Thank you again, you. Thank yes. you.